Good morning, everyone. We're glad you're with us today for part three in our Radical Reporting Function series. This has been a good series, and I've sure enjoyed your comments that things are making more sense to you now. Remember that Chuck's going to have a session on functions during our virtual conference that's coming up in early June, and I see a lot of you here are already signed up for a conference. We're glad you're going to join us. The rest of you, it's not too late. You can still join us. Um, place your questions on functions or your functions you want to see in the chat box. Matthew and I will keep an eye on that and get those requests to Chuck. And remember, you'll receive this recording tomorrow, and it will be saved to our webinar archives as well. So, Chuck, are you ready for me to turn things over to you? I am. Here you go. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to the third and uh, not final. We have another session. We'll be doing some capstone work at the annual conference. But uh, we'll be learning more about reporting at, with functions. Um, again, uh, today's agenda, we're going to be focusing on listing functions, exporting functions, and probably most of our time, we're going to try to do some audience requests, uh, call outs from customers who have asked for a particular demo of a function. Um, and then we're going to close this session with a review of function mechanics. I think we did a little bit of that at session one, uh, but we'll try to cover that again a bit more with two. Again, uh, by way of overview, uh, what are functions? What can they do for you? Um, again, if you're coming in late, uh, this is uh, a, basically a bunch of stuff and it allows you to extend the reporting system. It also allows you to do uh, do work. Again, special use functions that allow you to do mass assignment of data that is gonna save you hours and hours of time uh, by using what are called stamp functions, for example. There they are, the stamp data functions. Um, again, to review help, it's on the help guide. Uh, and again, where is this? If you go to the main screen, reporting, report functions, uh, you'll get that list. So what are listing functions? <clears throat> again, at this point, there isn't a specific group called listing functions, but they're sprinkled throughout the categories. And I wanted to kind of highlight them as a way to indicate how you can use a function to bring data into a report uh, that might be from a completely different table, uh, data that you want to bring into the report that aren't in <clears throat> the standard cursor, the standard set of fields that, say, one report courses in CEUs might provide for you. Uh, so again, uh, the idea is that if you have a course report that is uh, perfectly the way you want. And then you say, well, you know, I'd like to see the names of the people who canceled registrations, not everybody, just the people who canceled registrations for this group of courses that I'm analyzing. Well, rather than going through another report area and creating a new query and trying to figure out how to do that with print wins, you could use the list stud function. That's list student, of course. Uh, pass it a set of parameters that basically includes a condition that says cancel must be true, and that will give you <clears throat> uh, a listing of uh, names in a course that have canceled. And again, how I found the the list report or the listing functions was to go into the help guide, set my search to searching in reporting functions only and search for the keyword list. Okay, so what are some of the listing functions? Now, some of these you've seen before, like in the add functions, where we uh, have listed the functions that allow you to add data to a particular report. Well, some of those add functions will report multiple values, for instance, uh, on a given registration, you could have multiple additional optional charges. 
so that this does do a listing of fees uh, on a given report. Uh, add group uh, payments, payments within a group. Uh, just a list of optional fees, CRM data, code report, list that which we're gonna we're gonna take an example. Keep clicking back. We'll we'll look at an example of that in a second. Uh, listing of a workshops, uh, listing of all of the meeting dates for a class. This is one that is uh, valuable if you're running again a course listing of classes coming up. You'd say, well. I'd like to show in a summary mode how I can list all of the meeting uh, dates and times for this class. Well, you could use the date list function. Uh, we're not gonna demonstrate that, but let me go into the help guide and show you how that might work for you. So if we go into our help guide and we look for date list, I'm gonna look it up just alphabetically. So it says, here's how you do it. You pass a parameter of the course number, and then depending on what kind of data you want, you can look at the optional parameters. Now, when I look at a, a function and kind of decide how I might wanna use it, a lot of times I will just jump down to the examples down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, for instance, uh, if I wanted a listing of courses separated by commas, I would do a set of parameters that determines the length of the space, um, a logical list, only the dates, false if I list the dates and the times. So if I wanna list only the dates, it will just list the, um, I would pass a true as my second parameter. Uh, the number of columns, Again, different ways to format this report. And if I'm not sure, I would put that on a report and I just experiment with the different parameters until I see that it's formatted the way I want. Okay, so that's the date list. Again, a handy one. Um, returns list of individuals in a registration group. CRM records. List of students enrolled in a course. Um, again, that's one we'll do an example of. Listing workshops, listing the names in a name group. Uh, so again, if you're using the family grouping on the name record, um, and again, uh, if we'll go to student manager, and if you're using this grouping element here, uh, the function name group will allow you to run a list of all the names in that name group. NC reports, some, uh, unique summary listing packages. If you're doing packaging, this is a nice function that allows you to show a list of your mother courses, if you would, and then the courses that are the child courses in that particular one. Let me get in the right direction here. There we go. Uh, more listing functions. Uh, my tricky mouse. Uh, show the holiday date. Again, if you wanna see a list of holidays. Uh, returning a list of upcoming classes. That's used a lot of times in doing uh, emails if you're trying to promote upcoming classes. And I think there are generally in the Aceware demo some examples of what a show up class and this show up class rec um, would be in, in, your, in your email templates. Show code, show a list of the interest codes assigned to an individual. Again, that is one that um, we, I just used with um, a customer the other day where they wanted to see all the interest codes for a group of names, but they didn't wanna have multiple columns. They just wanted that list of interest codes on that particular names record. And let's go ahead and jump over to that because I'm gonna kind of highlight that when you get to show, when you get to some of these functions that are list functions, you have the option whether or not you want uh, them to be comma separated, which would mean they would be in a list uh, or in a straight in one row on your report separated by commas, 
or put in a carriage return, which would be a vertical list. So it would be one right underneath the other. So again, that's typically when you're doing listing, there'll be something called a delimiter, which allows you to uh, separate out how you want to list these multiple uh, codes that you might be uh, looking at. Uh, show code, duplicate records, show memberships for an individual, for your member programs, master workshops, uh, workshops by registrant, and teacher was, which again is kind of a variation. It uh, really is more of a query function, but it does list students who have taken classes from a given instructor, and that's really kind of a query function. Let's go back and take a look at a couple of these. Uh, the code report is one we'll look at first. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and run to manager, and we're gonna look at um, an example using the favorite reports. I've got that set up. I'm gonna modify so we can see what it looks like. So again, this is our report. Uh, their ship, I think you should have in your data examples. I know there are in the demo, uh, but this report in your uh, example reports under, um, this would be under, gosh, I'm trying to think, mailing labels. Uh, but basically, what the code report function allows you to do, and I'm going to bring this up in a zoom mode, which I just discovered the other day, that you can zoom out on an expression. But basically, you pass the code report, uh, the field that you're grouping the report, or the sort of the report on, in this case, it's zip code, and it says, I want to look at the NC code one function. So we're going to go ahead, it should be NC code one function. And we're going to say OK. And I'm going to get back out of my Zoom so we can kind of resume normal operations. Come on, normal oper. That was going the other direction. It's negative, negative, negative. Now I've got myself into a predicament. Here we go. Negative, 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 and we're back. We're back at 100%. Okay. Um, so what does that look like when you review it? File preview. Well, that would that maybe it didn't like my use of the code. There it is. So again, uh, oh, that's interest code. I was thinking of it was name code one. So what this is going to do is every instance of basically that is the interest code assigned to the zip to the students in the zip code. It gives you a summary count. So in this zip code 0196, two ACEWARE people, two people were interested in ACEWARE, two were interested in health, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, occupational codes. Well, uh, there weren't any occupational codes. Uh, here were four people in technical programs. Uh, four people were were connected with a organization that is. Oh, that's an occupation, technical occupation. And four is organization is uh, they were with an educational organization. Again, it gives you kind of a way to do mini stats on any given on any given report. Uh, we're going to cancel that because the report worked fine. Do you want to save it? No. All right. So we're done with that report. The other example we wanted to look at was list stud. And again, if I've got if I've got a let's get back to this. If I've got a report in Student Manager that is exactly the way I want in the courses area in the course CEU reporting area, but I wanna show the names of the students. Uh, what you can do is use list stud. All right, let's close this and get back to running. All right, let's try it the long way. Courses, 
CE reporting, modify. And here's our listed report. So basically, this report is a listing of upcoming courses, all right? Title, begin date, end date. But I wanted to know who are the students that are in this course. So what I did was create a, or just add a function using the word list stud. And what you pass to list stud is the course number. You can add optional parameters for different data fields, different, list, different data from the record, and whether you need a subset, if you want to add a filter to only report certain registrations. This is just all registrations in the course. And I can add, again, this report, list of upcoming courses, in and of itself has no data from the student records. But by using a function, we can do an add. We can add the student names to this based on the key of the course number. No, we don't want to save the changes. And we've got our report. Other one we want to look at, we've done listed. We were wanting to look at teacher was, which was an example of a listing using the teacher was as a query element. So again, we kind of actually jumping back to the querying uh, queries or the filter queries that we talked about in one of the earlier sessions. See if favorite reports behaving and they're not behaving. So we're gonna go the old way, reports, demographics, mailing labels. I should have teacher was in here. Additional report. Now, just a note, on the teacher was, it really does not, the query does not matter. And there are a few functions uh, that really commandeer the data that you're reporting based on the information you're going to pass to the function. So let's go ahead and get to teacher was. So again, a wizard that reports all student names who taught, who attended a class taught by a specific instructor. And again, it is basically every single student who was taught by that instructor. Actually, there is no other filter than they went to a class taught by Professor X. All right, so we're going to run, we're going to use a query, people from the state of Nebraska, as long as there's one student in the query to generate the report, we can get to the, the function. Okay, now teacher was, was called with a just do it. So we're actually seeing the wizard happen before we see the modify report. So right now we're gonna type Havlicek as the instructor. Uh, it tells us Havlicek was entered. Uh, we don't wanna enter any other names. Here's the, here's the instructor that we're going to cover. We hit the done button. Do we wanna set any additional? No, we don't. Do you wanna add one record per name? Yes, we do. Now, so this is basically all we have to do is add the teacher was function inside of just do it. We're gonna preview that now. And those are all the names of students who were in my classes here. Or the names and emails of students that were in my classes. And again, I had an issue with the name not displaying. Let's do stretch with overflow. No print, print, repeated values. All right, okay. Um, all right, so that is the example of teacher was. And we'll put that out there. This also has an example of a just after, which we're gonna cover later. Okay, uh, Sharon, we're gonna get into questions in a bit, but any immediate questions you want me to hammer right now? Carry on. All right. Okay, I'm unmuted, right, Sharon? There we go. All right. Um, 
Exporting functions. I, I know uh, there are often cases where you need to export data to an Excel file to share with accounting or to send something to a mailing house. And there is an option under the ACEWARE reporting that allows you to do export data to file. But if you always are only exporting just certain data fields uh, and you don't have to go through and uh, cherry pick, you know, field A over here and field Z over here and field Q over here and field XYZ over here, you can use a function like copy to XLS in a just after, and it will always copy just the data fields that you want. So what are some different export exporting functions? Uh, several related to catalog. Again, a couple of functions that allow you to do a catalog data output. Uh, there's our copy to XLS, which we'll do an example of. Uh, here's a extract for exporting course records associated with courses. Um, we actually, uh, that's really kind of set up for if you have a, a school that has multiple student manager databases, and they create a course in one database and they say, oh, wait a minute, I want to put that course over to another student manager database. It actually allows you to do uh, multiple data files. For instance, a course has a course record, a catalog record, it has a fee record, it has an instructor record. Uh, you're able to export uh, all of those uh, records in related files to pass to a, a different report or a different student manager database. A dead dump. Uh, now, dead dump, uh, name export, uh, copy to XLS, all of those really kind of give you uh, tools that if you want to export a certain set of data fields um, kind of in a cluster, you are able to do that. Uh, memo export is again for just the memo fields. Uh, preferred export. Again, if we talked about the name grouping where you might have multiple family members grouped together and one of those family members is uh, the head of household, uh, mom or uh, dad or Uncle John or Grandpa Jones who might be the head of household, you can choose to just have that one preferred name out of a group put on an address uh, report. So again, it's a specialty specialty report area. Um, I want to, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a show of hands here. How many of you uh, have, um, let me pull you out so I can see your listings. Raise your hand if you have used any of the exporting functions in a report. Anybody? Anybody? Raise your hands. Nobody? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, I, I present those to you. They are excellent tools. And let's go ahead and get into that. My, my favorite report. I'm going to close this and try to find out why. Hang on a second. I want to bring that back up and get my favorite reports back. Good. Not quite sure what happened there. So, okay, so what we want to do is go to um, exporting, copy to XLS example. And this is done out of demographics mailing labels. I want to export name and uh, email. So uh, there's our report. We're going to do it for a certain course number, only we have to actually enter a course number. We want all people from 21 fall. It's interesting that's in the future, but whatever. So uh, here is an example of uh, copy to XLS. And now it's asking you to export that to a file. And I'm going to cancel this because I want to put on modify so we can see what that looks like. Modify report, put in our query. So. What the copy to ls function allows you to do, and I'm going to let's well let's see if we can do the plus on this. We're going to do plus. 
So what you put is the copy to XLS function inside of just after, separated by a pair of quotes. Generally, when you call a function in a just after or in a just do it, you'll put an equal sign in head of, ahead of the function, and then basically you can copy the function um, as it is in the examples from the help guide or start typing in the parameters this function might need. For copy to LX, uh, XLS, if you don't care about setting a default location, you just type in inside a alternate set of quotes the fields that you want to export. Name one, name three, and NM email. All right, so we're good with that. Cancel that. We'll get back to the routine. Now we're going to close this. No changes. Here's the data that we, here are the names we want, 33 names. It's now asking us where we want to put this. Export email. So it's exporting the file, and now when I go to my desktop, I go into my function exports, and here is my export file, and it only has in it the fields that I want. I didn't have to go through and select a whole bunch or dump a bunch of files if I really didn't care about uh, that many, that many records. All right, let's move on to putting functions to work. And again, this, these are some user requests. And I, so we're going to go in and start to look at some of the examples of different functions that we, uh, that people have asked that we do some demonstrations on. So first one we're going to look at is find instructor. And it says basically, what Find Instructor does is allow you, when you're running a report of a course uh, or registrations, and you want to pull up information about that instructor, you can use the Find Instruct function to bring in that uh, course data. So we're going to go over to Student Manager. And we're going to say, well, Maybe there is a, a report that already has teacher was it, or uh, find instructor in it. So what I'm going to do is go to tools, reports, search reports for keyword. And again, if you're curious about a particular function, you might go ahead and try this on your database. Or like I said, I recommend using the demo. Go to the demo and do search reports for keyword. So we're going to look for find INST. It says, oh, we've got several reports that are default reports that have attendance roster, courses with fees, generate catalog copy, name roster, uh, the, 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 the regular name roster, uh, new, name roster, new column. Yeah, lots of reports that have this. So we're going to go into rosters, registrations, rosters, name roster, and we're going to modify. We'll look at additional report. Course number begins, 21F. Sort by fee. And there is the find instruct function right there on the on the report, find instruct, pass the course number, and you see we're using the course number from the registration table. We could have used the co-course, the, the course number from the course table. Doesn't make any difference. Just has to be a course number. And it will then return for us just the first name. Well, what if we wanted to return something different? Well, let's go see what Find Instruct offers us. Now, again, if I know I'm looking for a specific function, um, you can go into functions 
and look under the categories, but for me, I think it's easier to just look at them alphabetical order if I know the function that I'm looking for or, or go up into the search mode and type it. So find instruct FFF, FFF, EFG, FB4G, except after C, there it is. So course number, default value is name only. Well, what if I wanted the name and the phone number? Then I would pass it a parameter of a number three. So I go up to the course, open the expression, go in after the field or the, the course number field, type a comma and then the number three, and now I do a preview, and now it's showing the day phone number and the home phone number. And you see it's wrapping around going down the screen. So I would need to widen my field. So I have day phone, home phone. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save that. I think that's a good change. Yes, we're going to save it. All right, so that was um, find instruct. Uh, how about the age function? And again, um, if you've got a function that you are curious about and you'd like to learn more about, uh, go ahead and uh, type it in a note to Sharon. Or if you say, I'm looking to add something on a report per se, go ahead and send that note to Sharon. Um, if it's something we can handle, we'll certainly get to it during the session. Uh, age, uh, let's, let's take a look at the age function. So we're gonna get back to manager and we're gonna try our age example. Well, how is this set up? Uh, mailing labels, age example, and we're gonna look at people from a given state. We wanna know for the state of Kansas, uh, what is the kind of age, uh, break, not breakdown, but just, what are the ages of people that we're getting in the state of Kansas? So basically, I'm showing the birthday so we can see the reference. Uh, again, for the age function, that's there's only one parameter. Do you just give it the the pass it the birth date, or you could actually, if you wanted to, you could use age to determine how old in years um, registrations are. So if you say I want to know. Uh, if registrations are more than four years old, five years old, there are better ways to do it. But the point is, pass it a date, and it'll tell you how many years in the past that date occurred, that the, the birth date of whatever date you're looking at. Okay, there is age birth. So again, 1950, age 70. 74, age 47. 1950, age 71 etc cetera, etc cetera. if there is no date passed it returns a zero again if you're wanting to run reports of ages of kids in a camp and you just need to know to the nearest year uh, this little age function is a great way to show that no changes and the age so we've got the age. Some of these we're not going to have a chance to cover or I'm I'm not going to cover unless we uh, don't get some other requests from uh, you guys out there. Get SQL count. Uh, count it. There are some functions that are kind of unique that allow you to go get a count of records that might have nothing to do with the report area you're working with. Um, and again, uh, let's go see what an example of this might be. And we're gonna take a look at a unique report in Manager called Touches. And just a note on this, uh, the Git SQL function was having some issues. If you wanna go in and run this report, I would recommend that you go ahead and um, update the latest uh, Manager. And I'm thinking Matthew's going to be releasing that. Uh, Matthew, if you're on, uh, trying to think. I'm guessing if they're running an old 97 or earlier or running a 99.3 and newer, this will this will perform better for you. So let's take a look at what this get SQL count does. We're gonna go to names with codes. And the report we're talking about is user activity touches. 
So we're going to modify, take a look at that report. Uh, we're going to look at the last activity date. So I want to know from the 1st of January, greater than the, uh, uh, the, the 1st of January. So I'm going to look at all students who were uh, had same activity on their records since the 1st of January. And we open the report. Now, what we're going to see right off is a get data. Uh, we haven't talked to get data is almost warrants a whole webinar in itself. But what a get data allows you to do is add a second query uh, question at the front end of the report. Uh, so we're going to say we want to put in this same date, 10121. And what that's going to do now, and so the get data function allows you to, again, ask a question of the user and then use that data in, a, in the variables in the report. And so what is a get SQL count look like? Let's see if we can try our plus button, if you, I think that's helpful. OK, so what, what you can do is give the report a SQL command. And that structured query language, basically, it allows you to, quote, talk to the database. So I'm going to say, select the ID of the firm from the firm table where the user of this firm is equal to this user. And this user is the user who would have edited the record. And the last update of this firm record is greater than get data. Well, get data is the variable that contains that 010121 date that I um, looked at that I filled in earlier. All right, we're okay with that. We're going to go back to normal operations and we're going to preview preview this report. So, what this database tells me is that user Ace is a busy boy or busy girl. 29 39 names were on his uh, or her uh, initials. 131 registrations they touched. They touched 111 payments, 112 courses. Now on the web, now again, nobody was touching courses on the web. Uh, 28 names were entered, 21 registrations were entered, and 28 payments were entered. And again, under the names with, if I look at the back end of this particular cursor, there is nothing in here about names and codes. There's name, name, info, name, info name info, more name info, and there's code info, optional fees, there's a code info, user defined data, nothing in there about firms, nothing in there about registrations, but what that get SQL count routine allows you to go into, ask a question of any other database and be able to get a count uh, of how many records matched this uh, formula that you put in here. Again, uh, you're not expected to know what that formula might be for a particular question you've got. That's why you, um, you can shoot a note to your tech um, and they'd be happy to help you out with uh, formulating the, the language for SQL format to be able to get you, uh, get you your data. All right, we are done with Get SQL count, no changes necessary. Um, we've got, I know, let me see a question there while we're asking Sharon if that's a question, Rita, we want to answer. Um, one of the, I'm going to go ahead and ask a general hand up question. Have any of you uh, found or discovered this um, uh, user touches report? Any one of you run that? Nobody? Anybody? Oh, we've got one. All righty, very good. Um, but again, that's an example of using the get SQL count. Um, Sharon, uh, do we need, do you want to cover any other questions now or are we good? We still good? 
You're still good. I'm going to hold Rita's question hold until you're ready for new ones, okay? All right. Uh, several questions about date uh, variables. Um, and that's something that uh, I think, again, is worthy of a report. So we're going to go in to look at date bonanza. And what I did there was go into courses and pick some courses, and we're going to look at some date functions. Modify the report. Wow, lots of stuff here. Let's see if we can do our magical magnification. Let me know if this magnification tool is useful or not. Uh, otherwise, I won't bother with it, but I thought it would be a little easier to see. So this is, uh, these are three or four of the main date functions. The nice date function, uh, which allow you to generate a, a spelled out date, um, add CR date is unique because if you're running reports and you have a course number, now I'm using cool course, but RG course, PY course, if you needed to go get the date information about that class and all you knew was the course number, the add CR date gives you several options to do that. Uh, it also gives you formatting options uh, that we'll look at in a bit. And you'll note that some of these functions, they've got different parameters passed to it, and you're going to see in, when I preview this the results that have. Trim date is a function that shortens the date. And let's go ahead and try running that, and let's see if we can, let's see if we can. I'm going to, this is an experiment, guys. Let's go into Control I. All right, we are still zoomed out. Let's zoom in over here. All right, so here are, here are the results. So nice date in and of itself will give you uh, a date spelled out. The, the, the name of the month, uh, and the dates hyphenated if there are multiple in the same month, if it was across two months, if this was August 10th to September 12th, it would have inserted the word September there. So it would be uh, properly laid out. Add CR date gives you different ways to format a date output. And actually, it's kind of a shortcut function. Um, we talked about Namer and Scissor, I think, in the first uh, 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 webinar. Uh, if you want to, you can put in both dates without having to type in cobeg date, coend date, by just typing in the add CR date, co course, print, bam, and it'll give you begin date, end date with the hashes in it. You can add the one parameter and it'll put the year in. You can add a two parameter and it basically replicates what nice date does. Or you can add a five parameter and it abbreviates the month. Again, kind of like replicating nice date three. Trim date is one that I actually use a lot when I am struggling to have vertical or horizontal space on a report. If you're trying to run a report like this report and maybe I've got it portrait style, but that I want to add a couple more lines to the right, uh, rather than, I, see here I had to put the dates below uh, the line two in a separate line. If I wanted to insert them up here and squeeze them into a finite spot, I could use trim date, pass the course number, and it will give me the uh, the beginning date of the course, uh, truncated without any of the hash marks in between. Again, not sure when and how you might use those, but again, the point is you've got multiple options. And in fact, trim date actually has almost seven different format options uh, that uh, you're able to use with that. Cert date. Um, again, cert date is a unique function in that it allows you when you're maybe printing dates on a certificate, it allows you to type in a more formal date. You know, the 10th day of August, um, you know, and you can put in, I believe, I don't know why, 
I was thinking that it showed the 10th day of August and you could, uh, whether it had 2021 and on there, or it just showed the day and the month. Uh, if you add parameter one, it'll do 10 August, 2021. So you said, well, I like this cert date. I like this cert, uh, where's our cert date? There we go. I like this cert date, but I would like to put the year in there. How am I gonna do that? Uh, you know, no, no, no. Well, look down, keep on looking. We have three other date uh, functions that allow you to specify just the month. C month is the character month of the day that you're that is in begin date. Character day of the week is the character day of the week of whatever day Kobeg date is. And then year Kobeg date will give you the Gregorian year, whatever the year. Uh, the century year, century, I guess, century year of the date this belongs. So you could use cert date and year Kobeg date, and it would then show to 2021 over here um, on your report. All right, questions on the, um, questions on the date functions. And let me get back to, the here we go and we're back to normal behavior questions on the date functions going once going twice we good Sharon you're good all right there's our reports um other examples let's see here character day of the week date list do email uh, mass email wizard. Now, some of you may have used the email wizard and didn't didn't know that's what you were using. So we're going to go ahead and and run the teacher was. Uh, but we're going to show you how do email works with that. Kansas Havlicek. And all you need is the last name on this, by the way, for the teacher. We're done. Do you want to no. know? Yes. So here I have, if I wanted to send a note to uh, Chuck's students and say, Chuck's having a birthday, uh, send in birthday cards, blah, blah, blah. Well, I would have the just do it at the beginning to get me my teacher was so I could pick just Chuck's students. But then I'd add to this a just after and just put in a, a call to the function do email. Now you're going to note I was telling you a minute ago that, and I'll scroll up, give me, there you go, that in a just do it, you typically call a just do it by putting an equal sign in front of the function. The, there is another way to do it. If you're calling a function and it does not need any parameters, you can just put in a quote inside the just after parens and type the word do, as in do this, and then the name of the function, do, do email, kind of a do-do. Um, and that'll keep you out of do-do. Alternatively, you could have typed an equal sign and then put in the normal function parentheses, and that would accomplish the same thing. Now, let me get back to control negative, whoops, windows negative, and we're back. All right, we're going to save that, and hopefully I didn't screw anything up. We'll save it. So there's my list of names with valid emails, and here is the mass email launcher. This is what the do email function calls is your mass email. So now I could send an email, I could change my subject, and I could say Chuck's birthday, B day, send cards. And I would say, and money. Send that out, and everybody in that list of 33 is going to get the email. All right. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to. I think we're going to. I want to. I want to cover a couple other areas here. One is this idea 
of how do you serve up functions? Well, most of the functions that you would put on a report are just standalone. You add an expression box, type in the function in the expression box, and that's it. Uh, so we call that kind of a la carte. I just want um, a hamburger, I don't want fries, I don't want a shake, I just want a steak, no sides, no salad, no dessert, a la carte. Alternatively, you could do it via a just do it delivered before a report. Well, what are those kinds of examples? Um, you might call these as warming up before the report. Uh, some of those would be query functions. Find int, we talked about teacher was, the zip radius, where we want to ask, we want to tell the report, I only want to get names within 100 miles of zip code 66502. The other reason for doing them in a just do it would be if I want to add a new field to the cursor. Um, and again, if you have a report that has that you're exporting data from and you say, you know, I really want to export a field X and that field is not in my cursor, you can use a just do it and a function to again, go get the field and drop it into the report. Um, get SQL count. If you're wanting to get a summary of the total number of records uh, that have that have been canceled in a group of courses and do some percentage thereof, you know, which course resulted in the most number of canceled courses by percentage, yada, yada. Something like get SQL count allows you to do that. Uh, serving up functions via adjust after. And again, these would be a function that would be called after the report. And examples of here would be exporting functions, action functions like stamp functions, and emailing functions that we just illustrated with uh, the do email. So we illustrated this with exporting and we illustrated this with um, emailing functions. Okay, a couple of quick notes about section mechanics and then we'll have about five minutes of questions here. On listing functions, uh, when you're doing a list and there may be multiple lines of data, for instance, show test is a report of different credentials that a person might have uh, and they could have more than one. So if you don't put uh, stretch with overflow, it would only display the first line, basically whatever you have available in the box. The other function, uh, the other thing to remember about functions is to pay attention to quotes, quoting or not quoting. Well, it, it depends upon the function. Uh, namer does not need the ID of the name of the student you want to be in quotes. Uh, others like ad label uh, do require the file that you're going to get the ad label from and the UDF that you want the label for. Both of those have to be in quotes. Others are mixed. Add a pay. Pay sub ID is the field name that it's referring to, which is the unique pay ID for this payment. And then pay date is the field that I'm going to return back to the record. Again, uh, so when in doubt, as the bard would say, read the royal instructions. Go into your function and look down here. This is where you'd want to look at the quote or not to quote. Go down and look at the examples and see which ones are in quotes and which ones are not. Whew. Sharon, questions right on kind of time. Well, Rita would like to see um, how to pull people that have taken classes that include their title or interest code? Uh, to that include the title. In other words, you're querying on interest code and course title. Um, is what is that the way I'm reading that? I think so. All right. Uh, hang on. Uh, Rita, are you talking title of the course or title of the participant? The student title. Yeah. 
the individual. The individual. The, in, ti the title of the individual. Uh, well, if you're, if you're doing that, actually, you can do that right out of mailing labels because you could build a query. Uh, mailing labels allows you to query on name title or course title and uh, interest code. So you could just basically, that wouldn't necessarily need a function on that. Uh, you could do it on a name or just just as a query right out of mailing label. So, um, and again, if that's not, if you can't get that to work, you know, give us a buzz or give, give Mike a, or give Mike, Joe a buzz. Other questions? Uh, no, nope. Um, very good. Well, I, there were a couple other um, examples that I wanted to kind of see. Let's see, teacher was, uh, add opt and add pay, copy to Alexa, date bonanza, code analyzer, list stud. I guess we've kind of covered most of those. Um, so again, I guess it, in closing, um, assignment is really go out there and play. And again, as we mentioned, other than the stamp functions, um, you really can put a function and preview the report and not have any kind of worries about the database. And again, if you are worried, do it on a demo or on a copy of your database. Um, you've got the help available online and remember to register. If you haven't already registered, you guys, I think most of you are signed up. Uh, we are going to kind of do a capstone review of more functions uh, at the conference where we'll be getting more into how we're gonna use just do it's and just afters uh, to call these functions. So. Well, thank you for joining us. Again, if you're not signed up for the conference, sign up. Sharon, any final uh, comments or conference hoorahs? Nope. For those who are registered, watch your email next week. We'll have an email coming out that tells you kind of how to get prepared for conference to get the most out of it. So be watching your email. All righty, guys and ladies. Have a good week. Thanks, uh, everyone. We'll see you at conference.